Tier levels are new courses which follow GCSEs and are equivalent to 3A levels. These two-year courses which launched in September 2020 have been developed in collaboration with employers and businesses so that the content meets the needs of the industry and prepares students for work, further training or study. The term threshold competence is used a lot within T levels. We talk about a student gaining threshold competence. This is the point where they are equipped with the knowledge and skills to be confident and competent in the work environment. T levels are structured into four main components. The first component is what we call the core component, and this has all the underpinning knowledge, concepts, and skills that are required to achieve threshold competence. This is assessed by two externally set core examination papers. The employer set project will test the knowledge and understanding from the core, and this has been devised by employers and the exam board as a way of giving that real world opportunity to students. The next element is what we call the occupational specialist. This is where the specific knowledge and skills are gained. If you are taking a infrastructure route, all the knowledge and skills will be focused towards networking and cloud. The final part is the industrial placement. This will last between 40 and 60 days, spread over the two years, and it is intended to provide individuals with the opportunity to develop the knowledge and skills and behaviours required for skilled employment in their chosen occupation. If you're looking to progress from the digital production and design and development route, um, typical opportunities would be for a junior developer, a web developer, a mobile app developer, very much the junior level roles. Alternatively, you could look to follow a HNC or HND, or even a degree in virtual reality, software engineering or programming. On this course, you will get to cover some of the core cool unit content that includes problem solving, introduction to programming, emerging issues and impact of digital legislation, and regulatory requirements, business context, data, digital environments and security. On the employee set project, really five main areas, um, project planning, identifying and fixing defects in an existing code, design a solution, develop a solution, and then reflective evaluation to close off the project. Under the occupational specialism, you will be able to analyze a problem to define requirements and acceptance criteria aligned to user needs. Be able to apply ethical principles and manage risks in line with legal regulatory requirements when developing software and finally discover, evaluate and apply reliable sources of knowledge. The digital infrastructure route follows the same pattern as the digital production route in that you have a core unit, an employer set project and an occupational specialism. In terms of careers, you could progress into IT help desk, um, whether it be first or second line, IT support, IT infrastructure technician or network support role. If you're looking at progression options, you could progress on to an HNC, an HND, computer science or computer network degree, even a computing degree. You've got quite a lot of flexibility in where you want to go with this, including following an apprenticeship route or some specific vendor qualifications like a CompTIA or a Cisco. The occupational specialism, this is where things change slightly. So with the infrastructure, the occupational specialism has three areas, apply procedures and controls to maintain the digital security of an organization and its data, explain, install and configure, test and manage both physical and virtual infrastructure, and finally discover and evaluate and apply reliable sources of knowledge. Hi, my name's Steve Woods, and I'm a lecturer in the digital IT team at HSDC. I'd just like to take this opportunity to quickly tell you about our digital IT fundamentals course. 
This is a level two qualification, uh, which also acts as a precursor to the full T level program. This is a one year course, and the key features involve dealing with both software and hardware. We, the work is courseware based, so you get to work on assignments and qualify with pass, merit and distinction grades. You'll certainly learn about the world of work and also cyber and cyber security, computer networking. We we'll do a, a number of digital projects which will help embed your industry skills. And because it's a pre T level course, uh, you get to experience an industrial placement with a local employer. We also offer extra study at this at this point in terms of uh, helping you to improve your GCSE English and maths grades if that's appropriate. Entry uh, the entry requirements are four GCSEs at grade three or above, including English and maths, or an equivalent BT BTEC level one diploma. In terms of what you'll study, well, there are a number of units. It's organized in terms of units which will cover core IT skills. We'll work on your communication skills for working in IT industry, and you'll do hardware in terms of computer networking in our dedicated lab. You'll also work on programming. So we'll look at pro computer programming, website development, computer systems, and understanding cloud computing and cybersecurity. Again, you'll be able to work on your English and maths. Now, I'd like to um, just uh, take a little break at this point and show you some uh, words of inspiration um, from some individuals, some of whom I'm sure you will recognize. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, uh, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was eight years old. I was in sixth grade. I learned to code in college. Freshman year, first semester, um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had something come up and say, hello world, and it, the, I made a computer do that, it was just astonishing. Learning how to program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or, um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. And I wrote this little program and then basically just add a little bit to it. And then when I need to learn something new, I looked it up either in a book or on the internet and then added a little bit to it. It's really not unlike kind of playing an instrument or something or, or, or you know, or playing a sport. It starts out being very intimidating, but you kind of get the hang of it over time. Coding is something that can be learned. And um, I know it can be intimidating. A lot of things are intimidating, but uh, you know, what isn't? A lot of the coding that people do is actually fairly simple. Um, it's, it's more about the process of breaking down problems than, uh, you know, sort of coming up with complicated algorithms as people traditionally think about it. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You need to be determined. Addition, subtraction, uh, that, that's about it. You should probably know your multiplication tables. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to code. Do you have to be a genius to read? Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball, um, or, uh, you know, build a house. And it, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. What it is is, you know, computers are, are everywhere. You want to work in agriculture? <laughs> Do you want to work in entertainment? Do you want to work in manufacturing? You know, it's, it's just all over. Here we are, 2013. We all depend on technology to communicate, to bank, information, and none of us know how to read and write code. So, some inspirational words there from uh, some people I'm sure you recognize. 
What about on the hardware front? Well, in the college, we have a dedicated networking lab where you can strip down, upgrade and rebuild computers and set up your own network. And as we can see from the quote here, the ever increasing pace of technology means that working with hardware is a key skill. Finally, can I just say that if you have any questions, um, I thoroughly recommend you go to the HSDC website, uh, pull up the prospectus that's available there. You can look at the full range of courses. And indeed, uh, please feel free to contact me as the course manager of this particular course, Steve Woods at hsdc.ac.uk. Okay, I hope you found the information interesting. Thank you.